On the bench today, I'll be focusing on just the mirror box of a Pentax K1000. The mirror box has many mechanisms that are critical to the proper functioning of the camera, so I'm going to disassemble and clean all of the components individually, make sure it stays in good working order. Let's get to it. I'm going to start off by separating the prism assembly from the rest of the mirror box. This sub-assembly includes the galvanometer, the focusing screen, a Fresnel lens for the focusing screen, and obviously the big old pentaprism right on top there. All that stuff will come away by removing these four screws. This orange stuff is an old light seal, but it's more goo than foam now. I'll be doing a full overhaul of this whole unit, cleaning out the old foam and installing new material, but that will be another video. For now, I'm gonna focus on the mechanisms on the side of the mirror box. First, I'll get this plastic frame out of the way so I can have free access to all the moving parts. This thing is basically just a light baffle filling in the gaps between the round lens mount and the square front of the mirror opening. Next, I'm going to remove the mirror latch on the lower right corner of the mirror box. This bit is deceptively complex because there are actually two levers sharing the same post. There's the mirror latch, which I've already talked about a bit, but there's also a lever that closes the FP flash sync contact when the mirror goes up. It tells the flash when to fire. So I need to make sure I understand exactly how these are coupled, how they orient to each other, where the bias spring hooks on, stuff like that. And there's also a tiny washer in between that's easy to lose track of. Basically, I just need to pay extra close attention to this fiddly little thing. Next is the linkage for the first curtain striker. These little E-clips or C-clips are not the easiest thing to deal with. Uh, I just take a pick and try to hook the inside edge of it. And then I put as many fingers around it as possible, so when it releases, it doesn't go flying across the room. Pretty good luck so far. So my overall strategy here, as you might have guessed, is to take everything apart, clean off any old grease that may be present, clean any dirt and grime that is built up, and then reassemble and lubricate the critical points. It really doesn't work to clean the mechanism in place because I can't reach nearly enough of the surfaces. The pivots in particular are important areas to clean and they can only be accessed through disassembly. It takes a bit longer, but I think it's worth it in the long run. This screw on the aperture control lever is one of those fun surprise reverse threaded screws. And I always seem to forget about it whenever I work on this camera. It's not noted in any of the manuals I've seen, but as I mentioned before, anytime a screw is located directly on a pivot, I have to be aware that it could be reverse threaded. Luckily, before I threw all my strength into this thing, I tried it in the opposite direction and it came loose pretty easy. One more E-clip and I can remove the lifting lever link and that will be the entire mechanism disassembled. There's really not much to it. Uh, on other cameras, the mirror box can be a lot more complex, but the K1000 is pretty stripped down feature-wise. There's no self-timer, no depth of field preview, no mirror lockup, and all those mechanisms usually have some interaction or presence on the mirror box. Without them, the K1000 is about as simple as it gets. Okay, moving on to cleaning. I'm gonna start with these two bits of foam in the top corner. They are also light seals that keep any stray light in the body of the camera from making its way to the film plane.
On second thought, I'm going to let these soak a bit more and work on cleaning the pivots in the meantime. I'm just using basic isopropyl alcohol for pretty much all of the cleaning in this video, from metal parts to old nasty foam. That and a lot of cotton swabs. Like, a lot. Yeah, these seals are coming away much easier now. I'm ready for reassembly now. Each part will get a good swab down before I put it back on. I found these thin swabs that I really like for getting inside the pivots. They were a perfect fit for these types of parts. In addition to any dirt or corrosion, I also need to clean off the old lubricant. For these parts, that's mostly grease that has been used on the contact points between parts. You can see it come off the edges here on the cotton bud. It's recommended to use a medium weight grease to reduce friction and wear on these higher pressure surfaces. I like to use a molly grease, which means it just has molybdenum disulfide powder as an additive. It slightly increases the wear resistance. And I don't use much. Just a thin film is sufficient. I'm not packing bearings here. But other than that, no lubrication is necessary on the mirror box. The pivots run dry without any oil. I tend to only lubricate points if the service manual explicitly calls for it. And for the K1000, the only places indicated are the latching points, a couple areas in the winding mechanism, and oil for the fast moving parts in the shutter. Everything else in the camera is dry. I should mention though that I'm just a hobbyist repairer and a pretty new one at that. I'm not a professional that's been doing this since film cameras ruled the world. I do try to reference manufacturer materials whenever possible, service manuals and repair guides and such, but they don't answer every question regarding proper repair practices. Some things just require experience and hours on the bench, which I'm still slowly building. I share the repair practices that make the most sense to me, and hopefully you'll find them interesting and maybe even helpful. So let's keep moving. The mirror lifting lever is a little complicated because there are two parts working together. I have to make sure they're coupled properly and also that the smaller accompanying bits are in place. There's a thin washer that goes between the two halves and also a couple small roller bearings that go on these extended arms. These are the points that actually push the other levers around. And then with everything in place, I have to flip it on to the mirror box without anything falling off. A little tricky. With the lever in place, you can better see the purpose of these roller bearings. Instead of a fixed metal post sliding along the edge of another lever, 
The bearing creates a rolling interface, greatly reducing the friction and wear. Getting the linkage for the first curtain striker back on now, which is held in place by a couple E-clips. Sometimes I can just push these on with my fingers, but that last one kind of hurt my thumb. So I'm going to use my pliers for the rest. I have to be careful to apply the force uh, on the back of the clip and directly through the post. These are a bit delicate and it's easy to bend them out of shape. And of course I need a couple fingers around the clip in case it decides to take flight. I much prefer screws. Moving on to the mirror latch now. And this type of latch, one with a small bias spring that pushes it back into position, is just the type of thing that is easily disrupted by dirt and grime. Maybe it gets exposed to some gnarly environment, like really high humidity, a little bit of corrosion sets in on the surface, and then it sits on a shelf for a while, and all of a sudden the force of that tiny wire spring is no longer enough to push it back into place. In this case, if the mirror latch gets stuck, it would no longer hold the mirror down when you wind the camera. It would flip right up into the taking position and it would also trip the opening curtain latch prematurely. At the very least, you wouldn't be able to see through the viewfinder to frame a shot. And at worst, the shutter mechanism might become mistimed and completely jam the camera. So it's really important to make sure all these bits are running smoothly. I have one last spring to connect. Uh, I find a little piece of string or fishing line can really help with this. I thread the line through the hook on the end of the spring and then use it to pull the hook over the retention post. Once in place, I can pull out the line. There we go. I used to struggle through this with my tweezers because it was way too easy for the spring to slip out of the grip. It drove me nuts. The string provides a lot more control over the entire process. Grease the last few latching points around the mirror lever, and I think that will do it for the mirror mechanism. It's all back together and operating normally. In the next video, I'm going to tackle the prism assembly. I'll take it completely apart, clean out all the old foam, and replace it with new stuff. See you then.